Delegates at the COP28, a UN climate conference in Dubai, have approved a fund to assist developing nations in dealing with the damaging effects of climate change. This fund aims to aid countries, particularly in Africa, affected by climate-related disasters such as floods, droughts and rising sea levels. VOS Paul Ndiho spoke to Frank Tumusime, a senior researcher at Advocates for Natural Resource, Resources and Development in Uganda, which is a critical juncture regarding oil exploration. It's part of a process of mitigation and adaptation to climate change because the COP28 in itself is not an end to solving climate change. Yes, the key theme was setting up a fund to help uh, decarbonize, uh, especially the, with the Global South, in most cases the least emitters, because I think Africa emits about 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And then uh, we know that petroleum, uh, oil, gas, and mining, the extractive sector, uh, contribute about 1% of the greenhouse gas emissions. So Africa is way not there at all. Lately, uh, for example, we've had uh, floods that have killed a lot of people from Somalia to Kenya to Uganda and uh, most recently Tanzania. A couple months ago, we saw hundreds of thousands of people die in Libya because of uh, these uh, uh, floods and partly attributed to uh, climate change. What do you think needs to be done uh, to make sure that some of this funding that was, uh, that was agreed upon help Africans maybe uh, tackle some of these problems? First, first of all, there's some um structural challenges within our system and society. You see, this, the first question is debt management and also avoiding bureaucracy. In simple terms is that uh, decision making in such big monies is key. And red tape kills decision making. And so there's a push from people who have given money, the government uh, partners, but decisions are not being made, and money is not going is not being going down to benefit whom it's supposed to benefit. Uganda is now, I guess, on the cutting edge of producing oil. You talked about how uh, there's been an environmental impact. They have a need here where they want to basically uh, maybe build this uh, uh, oil and petroleum industry so that they can create jobs for their own people. But at the same time. Uh, they are dealing with a lot of challenges when it comes to environmental protection. Africa has about 40% of the global oil, gas, and mining resources that are not yet explored. Africa has just started, so that there's this argument that, look, let's first carbonize just like you did, then we shall decarbonize. And so that's why you see uh, we have a refinery process taking shape, we have the, the East African crude oil pipeline taking shape in order to prepare and first up the revenues. Then from there, it is assumed that uh, there will be clean technologies in, uh, in, the, in the oil extraction, and refining and transportation process. Then the money, some of it will be used to support the green, uh, clean energy transition. However, as we said, the danger is the fossil fuel industry contributes big time, 70% to the greenhouse gas emissions. So it is a rather sustainable development. Can we conserve, can we have oil out of the ground, extract, transport it sustainably? Is that possible? Well, when you look at the energy transition plan that has been, um, Uganda has launched, there is commitment to exploit our oil resources in a sustainable way. That was Frank Tumusime, a senior researcher at Advocates for Natural Resources and Development in Uganda, speaking to VOA's Paul Ndiho.